Hi there y'all, I'm starting a new series on the Empty Pantry Entrees channel devoted to dips, smears, and spreads from all over the world. And to kick things off, I've got a buddy of mine from Jim's Kitchen Kitchen releasing a companion video showcasing one of his favorite dips. Hey there Jim, what you making today? Hey there Tom, I love celebrating a dip and a smear. For my recipe today, I'm gonna be making a vintage dip I'm making a creamsicle dip that tastes just like that creamsicle you find in your freezer. But you're gonna dip fruit in it, so it's kinda healthy. Jim has a wonderfully creative channel with a number of characters that pop up from time and time again. His videos are both entertaining and informative, both in showing you new dishes you can try out at home, as well as some of the food history and fun facts behind them. Check out his awesome companion video linked below, and when you get there, comment and let him know that Tom from Empty Pantry Entrees sent you. In this video, we're going to be making a fake baked brie, and honestly, I don't know why we called it fake baked brie growing up. It just kind of was the way it was. Rather than using brie itself, this cream cheese schmear is just as simple as taking some croissant dough, putting a spiced cream cheese in the middle, and then baking it off and serving it with a deliciously spicy red pepper jelly. We are definitely showing our Midwestern roots with this recipe. But without further ado, I think it is about time for us to move on. Getting on with the recipe, you'll start by setting the oven to 350 Fahrenheit, the standard baking temperature. And while it's warming up, you'll have plenty of time to work the croissant dough. Of course, getting the most satisfying that is the best part of these canned croissant dough recipes. Spray down a foil lined baking sheet to prevent any stickage, and lightly dust your countertop with all purpose flour. Then, since I'm only making a half block, I'll only be rolling out two of these triangles. Nothing too crazy here, just a few rolls on either side to stretch them out to a bit thinner and wider pieces. Then, to make a rectangular bottom for our cheese schmear, align the two longest sides of the croissant triangles and press to form together and create one piece. Next is the cream cheese. After cutting it into two smaller block portions, place your cream cheese block in the center of the croissant rectangle, then top it with just a bit of seasoning. About an eighth of a teaspoon of garlic powder, an eighth of a teaspoon of onion powder, and a half a teaspoon of dill, all unceremoniously spread on top of your block. If you want to go through the trouble of mixing and incorporating the spices throughout, be my guest, but you'll have to reform the cheese into a wrappable shape. After wrapping it all up like a present, cut off the excess tails on either side, then gently pat all of those creases together to make a functioning seal. Don't want that cream cheese slipping out after it's melted. And hey, since you've opened up that can, you might as well make two little croissants so they don't go bad. Into the oven they all go for about nine minutes, or really until you get a slightly golden brown crust to the outside of it. While that's baking, let's get the dip plate ready. For me, the two toppers to the cheese schmear that we're working with are a nice and slightly tart apple. This time around, I went with a golden delicious since they were on sale. Slice and stack them up on a plate. Then, as a base, you can go with any sort of cracker you'd like. The simple townhouse original buttery cracker was typically what you'd see at our gatherings. And lastly, the piece that makes this incredibly delicious is this sweet and spicy red pepper jelly to cut through all the richness of it all. Bonus points if you can find one with a habanero in it too, that stuff really adds some kick in there. About 9 minutes later and these puppies are looking mighty tasty and ready for dipping. Ideally, if you're taking this over to someone's place, you'd pop it in the oven right before the appetizers are served. It's best enjoyed very soon out of the oven. And trust me, this schmear makes for an incredible appetizer. Creamy, savory, buttery, and then the tartness of either the apple or the pepper jelly really comes through to round it all out. I honestly don't think you could make an easier smear than this one. But if you know of one that you think I should try and make, feel free to shoot it over as a suggestion in the comments below. This collaboration was a great one, and I'm happy to kick off this new series with Jim's Kitchen Kitchen's support. If you haven't already, go check out his video. But for now, that's all I have for you. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time. 